So today is a big day for us. Uh, we have some work to do here in the basement. Making a whole bunch of stuff for the homestead means having the storage space to put cans uh, and, and vegetables and dry goods and bulk food and all that sort of stuff that uh, it makes sense to have on hand um, to be a little bit more resilient as a family. You'll notice uh, on the wall behind me, we don't have pantries. Uh, that gets fixed today, and we have turned uh, to that classic distributor and provider of quality farmhouse equipment, uh, IKEA. I have to admit that right now the pile of equipment does not look all that impressive. I have been assured that when properly assembled, these things will become cabinets. Step one, however, is before the installers get here in about an hour, I need to remove the carpet. A uh, couple of quick tips. Um, grab the carpet in a corner if you have to take up carpet. Uh, this carpet was loose enough that I was able to get in there. Uh, if you ever have to do something like this, you'll notice that there is the carpet itself. Um, there is the pad under the carpet. This is a pretty, pretty cheap, junky pad. Uh, and then there is the tack strip itself. Um, for doing the, the kind of DIY stuff, a few quick notes. A lot of the times they'll put down the pad with um, a little bit of glue, which is what you can see here. Uh, you know, that, that glue is kind of tacky. It's, it's not the, you know, horrible stuff. It is just a, a basic industrial glue, but it can be really time consuming to kind of take your nail and try and scrub that stuff up. Uh, I really don't recommend that. The, the other thing is getting these tack strips out of the way is a real pain in the rear end because they're, they're just a, a bit of cheap wood. Um, these tacks really hurt in the hand, by the way. Uh, just so you know, um, and they're only held in by these little nails, and this is a, a concrete floor, so um, these should be fairly easy for us to get up. Um, there's a secret weapon here. You can either go a crowbar, uh, and if it's got a nice broad blade tip, um, getting this, this pad off of the, the concrete that it's glued to, um, one of the ways that you can do that is with a garden spade, uh, or if you've got like a really flat build chisel uh, to get under there. And then the, the classic thing for a tack strip is to use a pry bar. Um, in a pinch, you can use like a standard screwdriver, but uh, we're actually going to use a shovel. All right, three quick tools will allow us to get it done. The secret weapon is the shovel. This pointy end will allow us to get underneath the tack strips and strip away uh, a fair amount of that glue that's on the floor. For stuff that gets a little stubborn, we have a pair of pliers to get up some of the tack strip. Uh, these are great because it means I don't have to get near the tack and grab them with my fingers. I will put on gloves here in a minute. Uh, and then for that glue, uh, a tile scraper actually is fantastic because it gives you not only the scraping end but if you uh, run into a place where maybe the glue was put on a little bit more thickly and it just won't release you've also got that little scraper uh, to to get at the bits and you know here we've got a, a concrete floor so I don't have to worry about scarring or marking the subfloor uh, it makes things uh, a lot easier
and you'll see the shovel was able to grab the tack strip. Uh, in this case, there are a lot of these little nails into the concrete. Uh, it looks like they had a few that didn't go in very well, so they just added more. Uh, and we've got this little line of glue. This little line of glue leaves a little bit of residue. If I wanted to be super clean, I could go behind with the scraper and scrape this up. Uh, in this case, I don't need to because I've got little feet on the bottom of the cabinets. So my focus at this point is get this stuff up uh, and then go ahead and go behind with the broom so it's nice and clean before the cabinet uh, install guys get here. That's it. That's the whole thing. Uh, now it's time to come clean out. Notice the uh, tack strips have these nails in them. You can bag them if you have a construction type bag. Uh, otherwise, put them in a regular bag and then handle it as little as possible because any friction uh, against the bag will uh, will see these guys tear it up. Well, we got out what we needed to. You'll notice the tack strips come up as kind of these four foot strips. Like I said in the bag, they have a tendency to poke through. I mean, you can see a nail here from some trim. You can see the tack strips themselves kind of poke through. So you'll want to get that to the trash right away. Don't let the kids get near it. Uh, try to handle it as little as possible. Otherwise, it'll just rip through the bag. But uh, everything's ready to go, and we're going to have pantries in a couple of days. That's exciting. A day later, as if by magic, the cabinets have appeared. We, uh, we were able to very successfully go ahead and peel out uh, that carpet. And now we can do a trim, have some new tack strips put down, re-secure the carpet. And if you look at the bottom of the cabinet... They float a little bit on these little legs, which helps keep them level. Uh, and that, that little bit of glue that was left after stripping up the carpet, and even any residue that's on it, really is, is not going to you know, bother the cabinets. because They're not sitting perfectly flush on the floor. So if, if you can't scrape up every little bit, you really don't have to worry about that. And then you, you come back, you, you trim some of your sideboard pieces and re-secure them. Pretty easy project. Mm -hmm.